Hello, hello, my name is Callista and welcome back to Cinders. In the last episode, Carmosa has finally returned from wherever she's been for the past two days and she wants to speak to all of the girls on their own. She's just spoken with Sophia. Let's see what she had to say. You're back. That was fast. Aren't you happy to see me? I'm fine. Sorry to disappoint you girls. So what was the talk about? You'll find out soon enough. It's your turn and I wouldn't keep Mother waiting if I were you. All right, I'm off. Wish me luck. You might need it. So good luck, sister. Good luck. So, how was it? Carmosa swoops down on you like a hawk and, and submits you to great physical torture and tests your endurance. At one point, she took this long needle and... Oh, lovely. Thanks for that image, sis. You did get a little pale, but honestly, you'll be fine. So it wasn't that bad? Oh, don't get me wrong, it was no pleasure either. And Carmosa hatched a plan that will make me lose a lot of sleep till it's all over. This can't be good. I'm almost afraid to ask, what is it? Oh no, you need to be properly surprised when you hear it from Carmosa. That will prove I did not utter a word. But you don't need to worry too much. Only Gloria and I get to fail Carmosa and her ridiculously high expectations this time. As far as I know, you will not be involved. I never thought I'd be happy to hear that someone forgot about me. Then let me add to your joy. I forgot about you and your little escapades when I recounted to Carmosa what happened during her absence, so you should be fine. I wonder what Gloria will tell. Aren't you worried? I'm not sure. She seemed fine when we talked. As odd as it may be, you might be right. My silly sister babbled a lot about how she finally got through to you. What a success it was to finally come to some sort of understanding. The most pathetic part was when she decided this understanding was important enough to make it the topic of the day. I'm glad she felt that way. I thought it made for a nice change of pace as well. The only thing missing from this picture is holding hands and singing, and dancing, possibly in circles in the middle of a flowery meadow. I think I might throw up. I think you could use some hand-holding and singing. Having friends doesn't hurt, you know. At least it works better for me than isolation works for you. Oh, shut up. Let's just wait for Gloria. It shouldn't be too long. You're back. How was it? What do you mean? Well, was it, I don't know, unpleasant? Of course not. Why would it be? It was just a normal conversation. Normal for you, perhaps. Come on, Gloria, I can tell it wasn't that smooth. Who's this? This Sophia. Stop being so nosy and start asking proper questions. Did Carmosa tell you about her plans? In fact, she did. Oh, of course she did. You earned that special little place on her lap. Sophia, please. Shush now, Cinders. So what do you think of Mother's latest, greatest plot? You would think she'd learn not to expect the impossible of us, or anything big, really. And maybe it's time to live up to her expectations? You're a grown-up now, Sophia. It's time for you to work on managing your responsibilities. You're hopeless and stupid. Some of us are simply not built for greatness. If only you focused on doing something useful half as often as you do on sharpening that vicious tongue. You must speak plainly. I'm too stupid to understand complex sentences. So what are Carmosa's plans exactly? Oh, I'm sure she'll explain everything in a moment. Now hurry, don't keep her waiting. You know how angry she gets when someone's late. Oh yes. I feel like this is going to be quite an adventure. And I'm about to enter the beast's lair. You don't need to worry. I didn't tell her about your little excursions. 
I did tell her, however, you behaved in a responsible and trustworthy manner. Which I'm sure Mother has immediately taken to be true, since she values your opinion so highly. Oh, thanks, Gloria. All right, then. I'm going. Wish me luck. Hello again, Carmosa. It's been so long since I did your voice. You called me? Oh god, it was posh but deep. Yes, I did. Come in and close the door. I'd like you to explain something to me. Weren't you the busy little bee while I was gone? I'm not sure I follow. I've just talked with your sisters and they both vouched for your good behaviour during my absence. They did? Oh, that's... Surprising. <laughs> I realised that. Surely you must have played your cards well if you befriended them both so quickly. I don't recall playing any cards. I just took some time to talk with them and try to understand them for a change. I guess it worked. How lovely. But I really couldn't care less about that. The important thing is that you didn't do anything stupid or managed to get yourself into some trouble like I was expecting. Just thinking about having to listen to your whining and excuses makes me cringe. So it's a good thing we won't be having any of that, yes? Don't think I didn't notice your behavior last week. It was exceptionally proper and thoughtful. I must say I was very pleased with you. I'm even more pleased to see that you're making a habit of it. Responsibility and discipline are necessary qualities for any young woman who wants to make something of herself in the world. Keep it up, and who knows where it will lead you. I'm... I mean... Thank you, ma'am. Regardless of what you may be thinking right now, adding wood to the roaring blaze of that ego of yours isn't the purpose of this talk. Praise means nothing save the purpose it serves. Remember that. There are important matters I need to tell you about. It has to do with my plans for our family. Our family. Okay, we're being included in that. Admittedly, we're not being included in this great plan of hers. At, at least, it's nice to know she's including us in the title of family. Two days from now, a grand ball will be taking place in the royal palace. Any royal business is very important, of course, but this particular ball will be very important, even for his royal highness. It means very careful preparations. The royal masquerade, I might have heard about it, yes. Oh, you have? This is very surprising indeed. Is it? Recently, I've learned that it isn't that difficult to obtain sensitive information. One simply has to pay attention to what is going on around them. Watch carefully who is meeting with whom. Especially when it comes to certain shady looking, looking characters fetching rumours like a trained hound. Really? Well done then. Perhaps you're not as thick as I thought. Let's hope you'll forge this little success in collecting information into a permanent quality. A quality which I'm sure you'll find useful in life. Being well informed surely beats being kept in the dark. Folks say that truth shines like light and ignorance is the, is the darkest night. It's a fitting comparison. After all, night is a time of fear, vulnerability and powerlessness. I learned quite a few things these days. I feel much safer and more powerful already. What matters here is the ball is very near and there is little time left. It means that I will be expecting our entire family, and I do mean all of us, to give it their best. By which I mean complete obedience. No questions, no dramas, no nonsense. This is much too important an event to be spoilt in such a silly way. Very well. And what is my part in this plan, then? Will I be going to the ball as well, member of our family that I am? Don't be absurd. Royal affairs aren't your arena. I see. Then what is my arena, ma'am? Why, the house, of course! If everything goes smoothly, the ball should mark the point of our family coming back into high society. And that means one thing. Guests. We will need combined effort to make the residents spotless, but your role in this will be crucial. I see, my lady. 
Would you also like me to hide in the wardrobe or pretend I'm a statue when the guests come? Or maybe being a statue would pose too much competition for your charming and intelligent daughters. I understand your anger and your reasons. Now you must understand mine. I put much time and effort into creating this opportunity for my daughters. I will not let them be upstaged by anyone. And there's... There's the difference. Sophia and Gloria are her flesh and blood. We're just a, um... A married-in relative. You may play all sanctimonious with me now, but either now or in ten years, you'll understand my perspective, and you will agree with my decision. Besides, being the resourceful little creature that you are, you will, without a doubt, find your window of opportunity with little difficulty. If you're really that smart, you will get your chance to shine and you will take it. You like to refer to all of us as family, but only if it means I have to do something. Don't get melodramatic, girl. You sound like a bad novel. Even if I wanted to, I wouldn't be able to prepare three young ladies for the ball organised by the future king. Do you have any idea how much a decent dress costs these days? No, of course you don't. Oh. <laughs> Should I mention I know about the money problem? Do it, or better not. I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted by this. I think if we can... Th this will either end one of two way ways. Either she'll be impressed that we've managed to dig so deep, and then she'll be like, oh, well, your behaviour has helped the house because you knew about the money. Well, we didn't at the time, but maybe we can blag it. Um, she'll think that we've been behaving better because we know about the problem, or she'll be deeply offended and we are going to get slapped. Oh. Would there be a better time to play this card? When? When, when would be the better time? We... We got this information so we could use it. Oh, I regret everything. I regret everything. Yes, apparently a big house and an inherited title don't make anyone rich, do they? And when in need, even the most proud and snobbish get desperate enough to trade away heirlooms. What are you saying, girl? That useless misfit couldn't keep his mouth shut, now could he? It's fairly easy to get information once you know it's there. It's just a matter of perseverance. Bold words from one so young. One could think great spy masters should be asking you for counsel. She's impressed. Yes. Most fortunate for me to have such a treasure under my roof. And so humble, too. But collecting rumours, even the juicy ones, isn't enough. Great spies need to know how to use them for as leverage. Do you? And what would you say if I told you that I had found a way to solve our money problems? <laughs> that is some nerve you are showing, girl. Perhaps you are growing up and on your way to becoming a resourceful young woman. But I doubt that the, that the testimony of the last few days is enough for me to overestimate you in such a way. And what if you're wrong? Can you afford that? Well... Assuming that you did indeed suddenly grow a backbone and realised how the world works. Assuming that I won't keep you locked in your room to prevent you from repeating those charming escapades of yours. It would be very impressive to learn you thought about our problems and actually came up with some solution. Very impressive. This tells me nothing. I can easily imagine your favour coming and going with the wind. I want to know if solving your problems for you would make me your equal. You know how to be bold, girl. I give you that. But you still lack realism. Stop fantasizing. You are making... However, if you want to try something on your own, if you want to prove that you can be useful or even just fuel your ego, I won't stop you. Who knows, you might even learn something about life. 
Those are dangerous wishes you are making, ma'am. Now, now, girl, you're much too smart to speak to me like this. By the heavens, I swear you were sent to make me suffer every time I compare you to your sisters. Hmm. Enough of this idle chatter. We have a very important task ahead of us and little time left. Since you're thinking so highly of yourself and your skills, why don't you show us your pragmatic side and start cleaning the house and helping with preparations? That's it. Do you really believe that this is all I can be good at? Demons, snap out of that constant daydreaming girl and start paying attention. Do you think that even if you were the lady of this house, you wouldn't need to keep it clean? Are you really selfish enough to believe that? Besides, the terrible burden of dusting and doing the dishes is minuscule in comparison with my responsibilities. Be grateful for having such a simple life. Oh yes, very great. Shush! Not a word. Get the girls together and call the servants. Wait for me in the hall. I will bring you your orders in a moment. Hmm, we've definitely seemed to earn her respect. But I don't know if that's going to be enough, and we have several hours later. Finally. It's so clean you could positively dine from it. I'm tired, but it's still better than washing all those dishes. I hate doing dishes. She's been back for little more than one hour, and here we are, scrubbing the floor on all fours. Cleaning the windows. Polishing silverware. Twice. And dusting. Dusting everywhere. And did I mention doing the dishes? You might have. I hate that. Do you know what I hate? I hate the fact that I am here while my dear, charming, and wise beyond her age wonder of a sister is upstairs. Playing the little princess she will never be and trying on that ridiculous dress Carmosa brought her. First, first of all, you never saw that dress, and second, who knows, maybe the prince will fall in love with her and you'll end up being the queen's sister. I doubt even the, that amount of noble blood can make a person dense enough to fall for Gloria. Although, maybe if she kept silent? You're terrible. Besides, for all we know, the prince could be denser than lead. Also, I didn't know you cared about balls and dresses. Compared to this, I think I prefer the Royal Circus. Sophia, I need to thank you for putting in a word for me when you spoke with Carmosa. I appreciate it. Don't mention it, and don't overestimate my goodwill. I find myself just as surprised by my behaviour as you are. I'm sure some dark power possessed you that brief moment you actually did something nice for another person. Anyway, I appreciate it. What, you, what are you two blabbering about this time? Wondering why the hall isn't sparkling yet? Well then, stop talking and get to work. This place has to be worthy of the Emperor. You seem very confident that people will suddenly crave visits to our house, Mother. Just because they met us at the ball? Will they be so taken by Gloria's charming sense of humour and my kind and sunny disposition? There goes my wonderful Sophia, always heavy as a storm cloud. Are you finished? Because there's work to be done. Also, frankly dear, I had stopped paying attention to your theatrics a very long time ago. I'm sorry my acting isn't up to your standards, Mother. This ball is much more than just a meeting. It is a chance for all of us to get a firm footing in this world, and heaven knows we could use some of that. I have waited for far too long and invested much too much to let this chance slip. So stop whining and start being serious about it. Or do you want to end up with no money and just the clothes on your black back, like Cinder's here? Don't get your hopes too high. What did you say? Are you whispering in my presence? Nothing, Mother. Mother, where are you? I need you to see this. What is it again? Ooh, very nice, Gloria. 
That must have been a mistake, Mother. This dress isn't my size at all. It's too long. I'm sweeping the floors with my every move, and if I ever have to dance in it, I risk serious injury or worse. Wow. Personally, I think you look very pretty, Gloria. Thank you, Cinders. It's still not my size. Imagine how it's going to look after even a brief stroll in the royal garden. What is this? Demons, the man is clearly an amateur. I gave that crook all the numbers and made sure he got them right several times. I'm sorry, Mother, but I really can't go wearing this. What are we going to do? No reason to lose your head, Gloria. Perhaps visiting the tailor without you was a mistake after all. But we can still salvage this situation. There's still time. We'll all have to go to the tailor tomorrow and make sure he gets it right this time. A trip to the tailor. How very entertaining. Stop whispering behind my back and try your dress on. We have to know if it fits. And you, Cinders, stop loitering and get back to cleaning. Just great. It must be very painful watching, watching uh, Sophia and Gloria getting, you know, very beautiful dresses. It, oof. Cinders, do the cleaning while we try our new dresses on. Sure. Why don't we all relax and enjoy ourselves while Cinders scrubs the floors and walls? I can't believe I'm back to this again. Those past few days have been amazing. Now I know there's more to life than this, and not only in fairy tales. I need to change something instead of just bending to Carmosa's will and going back to what is called normal around here. How can I just forget about freedom now? Okay, so Carmosa has shown some human features recently and tried to be nicer. But that does not mean I should lick the hand that keeps me on a leash and makes me miserable. If I am ever to take a different role around here, I need to do something. And I need to start now. Oh, hello. What is that? Who would knock on my window at this hour? Some shady character it must be. Let's see. Hey, Peralt, buddy. Here, Cinders. It's me, Peralt. And he seemed like such a composed man. Oh well, let's do something about him before Carmosa kills me. Come inside before anyone sees you. Do you want to be the reason for a domestic violence? What? Well, one second, excuse me, I completely misread that. Come inside before anyone sees you. Do you want to be the reason for domestic violence by provoking Carmosa into ripping me into pieces? I wouldn't let anyone hurt you. Oh, so you provoke violence to have something to resolve? Nice way to provide yourself with work. This way you'll always be needed. I... I'm sorry to bother you. You've hit a soft spot there. I have no idea whether I have a job anymore. Or a purpose for that matter. But what happened? I shouldn't bother you this late at night. I, I am extremely sorry. No need to apologise. You're always welcome. But what happened? What brings you here? And how were you even able to find me? That is a lot of questions. You might consider a career as an interrogator. Finding you was easy. It's not a secret where Lady Carmosa lives. I did have some problems determining the right window, though. I'm afraid that I got it wrong the first time. So if anyone complains about burglars or weird animal noises... <laughs> I'll laugh at them and convince them it was their imagination. But what brings you here? Can we talk somewhere else where no one will interrupt us? Again, I'm sorry to bother you. It's just I have no one else to talk to. It's no bother. Would you like to go on a walk with me? I know the most beautiful place in the forest. Oh, so you can sneak out. That would be... Thank you. Of course I can. Look. And there we go. Ooh, this is romantic. Here we are. This is my place. Well, not really mine. It belongs to someone else, but I come here frequently. Yes, these woods are ancient and have been a part of the royal domain for centuries. Since the first king, they've always belonged to the crown. That's not what I meant. When I was little and my father was still alive, he used to tell me stories about fairies living in this part of the forest. Sprites or not, I can't deny the air, the air this place has. 
It's very soothing. That's why I called it my place. I come here to relax, and I need that quite often. But you wanted to talk about something. I get the feeling it must be something disturbing. You were very quiet on our way here. Was I? Yes, I was. It's just something that happened yesterday. You might say I was caught off guard. Was there another fight in town? Did you have to? No, it wasn't a fight and I didn't kill anyone. It was just a talk. A talk with whom? The prince. It's so strange that I'm going to discuss this with you. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to be nosy. If it's some kind of secret affair of state, then you're right, you shouldn't be telling me anything. It's not about secrets, and you're not nosy. I said it's strange because I don't know a single person other than you with whom I could speak right now. Now isn't that odd? You told me yourself that your duty defines you. I guess friends don't really fit into such a picture? Perhaps I've finally traded one for the other. What do you mean? My prince summoned me today. He told me about his plans, plans for the kingdom and for me. Plainly speaking, he told me that I am no longer needed, that my position is obsolete, and that he wants me to take up another job, a different job. I see. And this new job would require you to do what exactly? Lie. He wants me to become his master spy. I see. So what did you tell him? That I will think about his, rep his proposal. I can see you're very upset about this. Why is that? I thought you wanted to serve and protect the future king. And yet, you are clearly conflicted. That's what makes it so upsetting, the fact that I can't make a choice. I know my duty and I honour my allegiance. He is my prince and he has my sword and my bow. But not necessarily your forked tongue? Yes, I am not made for intrigues and court politics and even if I were, I don't think it's an honourable kind of duty. It must have been difficult to hear your liege ask for you to accept it then. Not only that, he also said there is no need for my current service. But this is everything I know, everything I am. I trained to be the captain like my ancestors before me since I was a little boy. How am I supposed to change all that for a hooded cloak? I don't know, but it does sound like a life-changing decision. Maybe I should simply retire. Leave the scene before I become a joke. The prince gave me that option as well. Whatever his reasons may be, I'm sure this wasn't an easy decision for the prince either. He did give you a choice after all. Carmosa doesn't ask me what I want. From what I gathered, you're more than just a subject to him. Perhaps you're right. So what would you choose if you were given the same choice? Hmm. This is a difficult question. This duty is very obviously going to make Peralt miserable. He, I don't think he'd be happy as a spy master. I think if he did accept that offer, I think he'd live to regret it. I think if he retired, maybe he could go off and... Like, other kingdoms must have guards. He could maybe join them instead or he could he could settle down like cinder suggested i think while he'd be upset in the immediate i think in the long term i think he'd be happy with that decision if you really want to know my opinion i think you should retire really why is that well it's obvious to me that you served your liege outstandingly and you really earned some time off duty. Time's changed and your mission is accomplished. You made it, now it's time for you to rest and think about yourself, your life and what you want to do with it. You're being very nice while calling me a useless relic of the past at the same time. Don't be ridiculous, a man of your skills? I'd say the world is wide open right there in front of you. 
I also think that the prince must realise this. That's precisely why he presented you with a choice in the first place. I don't think I'll be making my mind up yet. This is simply too new. There's something else too. I always thought about myself as a man of duty and honour. You might have mentioned that in our conversations, yes. That's exactly how important it is. It was for me. But now that I am given a new duty, I have trouble accepting it, and I think I know why. You do? Yes. It's because I'm not a man of duty at all. I'm a man of the sword, and that's what has been making me so devoted to royal service. But once it's gone, I'm not so good at taking orders from the prince. It wasn't honour that kept me at his side. It was pleasure. I was doing my duty because I was enjoying it. Which, I'm guessing, is a bad thing? Of course it is. Duty and honour stem from discipline and self-sacrifice, not preference. But doesn't make think doesn't fun make things, well, funnier? Apparently, yes. Besides, you're obviously very good at being one thing, a warrior. This may be true or not, however, I'm not sure I'm good at being a politician. I just don't have what it takes to manage to lie all the time. Manipulate others, yes. I was never good at it, and I seldom tried. It's just not who I am. I think that condition's called moral backbone, and it's only curable with money. I don't care about money. Then I'm afraid you'll have to live with it and hope it won't be terminal. Congratulations. We've just determined that you have a heart, and with that shocking revelation, I am just about out of time for this episode, so... Please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista, thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.